So now we need to look at what is a relational database because you need to have an understanding of this. Um, Microsoft Access is a software platform that allows for the building of relational databases. And it does not work, as I know from sad experience, on Mac computers. Um, but I'm going to try to uh, explain the concept to you guys and then show you Microsoft Access, the uh, actual little database uh, in there. So hopefully you get the idea. So this is a basic database setup. And you'll see that there's an operational database there on the left and a marketing database on the right. Those are two databases. And this is a relational database setup. Okay. The marketing database is the parent database, and the operational database is the baby database. Okay. To make it sort of ridiculously over, over simple. Um, so the marketing database is the consumer database that we've talked about. Um, this is where, um, Responses to marketing communications go into the marketing database. Um, whether they be emails, your know, marketing database is sending out emails to different segments in the database and um, tracking responses. It's doing surveys and finding out consumers' preferences. It's doing basic analyses. It's figuring out uh, lifetime value for customers. It's finding the MVC is the most valuable customers. RFM, you see up there on the right, is re recency frequency monetary. It's another way of um, quickly uh, analyzing and making money on your customers. Uh, the basic concept there, it's different from, from uh, the most valuable customer. Um, you're basically uh, finding the people who most recently bought from you and bought the largest amounts or bought a couple of product categories, and you're going back to them with an offer right away. So it's fast, it's transactional. Someone who buys, particularly someone who buys a lot, is going to get an email offer tailored to get them to buy more. You know, Amazon is an expert at this. Appended data, um, we should talk about for a second because that is the concept of going to external databases, other people's databases. There are many companies that specialize and have these databases. And um, the idea is to um, uh, get more information about your customers from their databases. So there is a company called Axiom. I think it's A-C-X-I-O-M. That is uh, the biggest, one of the biggest, if not the biggest. Um, Experian you may know is a, a credit rating company also uh, sells data, your data, <laughs> my data, everybody's data. Let's take Axion for a minute. Axion has bought or somehow gotten hold of um, thousands of different databases across the country. So they have car purchase information, car warranty, uh, washing machine warranty cards that have been returned. They have those, those data magazine subscription data, uh, bank uh, data, credit card applications, uh, all kinds of purchase data, um, voting registration data, all kinds of data. And um, they have the ability to, um, so if uh, Sephora sends them um, someone's information, an NBC, and says, do you know anything else about this person? Um, Axiom can look at all these thousands of databases and will know what magazines you subscribe to and uh, know uh, where you bank, know what kind of car you drive, uh, and, and on and on and on. And... Um, that's appended data. So I go outside to an external company, another company, and ask them to give me more information about my target customers. Now, on the left side here, the operational database, this is 
bing, 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 bing. This is, uh, I make my order, I pay, it goes to shipping, it goes to the warehouse, right, and shipping, and that whole thing. That's a whole separate operation, very fast, bing, 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 bing. Um, it needs to be a separate operation. You, you don't want to run all that through the marketing database. It needs to be a, not have too much data, just the minimum data, just to get the orders uh, paid for, delivered properly. Um, now, the operational database needs to feed transactional data into the marketing database, does, and it needs to do it by customer. So every customer has a customer number. Every customer in a customer database has a unique identifying customer number. Sometimes it's their phone number. Sometimes it's an email address. Sometimes it's something else, a number that the company just gives them. And so what you'll find is that the marketing database, the far left column is the unique customer number. And then you have last name, first name, email, etc., cetera, demographic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The operational database also has a customer number, um, you know, because it's got your credit card information, et cetera, et cetera. So the way information is sent to the right place from the operational database is sent to the right place in the marketing database is through your customer number. So the customer number links the two pieces of information. And so the databases are related because of the customer number. And that's why the operational database is a relational database. Okay? It's not kept with a regular marketing database. It wants to be faster and not bogged down. And so basically some companies have uh, many relational databases and information. I mean, Amazon, if you think about it, also has a product database. Um, it may not be have the customer number in it, but... There are examples where there are lots of different databases, lots of different discrete sort of pieces of information that are related to each other, so they're put in their own database, but they relate to the whole because of usually a customer number. Okay. This is Microsoft Access. Okay, and this is what I built. This is a database. I had a, used to have an old Subaru. Now I have a newer Subaru. Um, but my old Subaru uh, Outback, uh, I was spending a lot on repairs. It was coming to the point where I'm like, mm, should I get a new car? I did. I got the other Subaru. Um, but I wanted to see how many times, you know, whether I'd repaired everything in the car. And that was the transmission been repaired? How many times has the engine been repaired? How many times the spark plug? How many times have the brakes, pads been replaced, how many times have I had to change the stuff to do with the axles, and, uh, you know, what about the air conditioner? How many times have I repaired that? I'm just trying to get a feeling for how much I'm spending on the car over the last few years, and what I'm spending on. Is something breaking regularly? Dot, dot, dot. How much is this all costing me? <laughs> There's a time to get a new car. And so... The first thing I did was um, I took the um, my receipts from repairs, okay, logically, right, for the past few years, and I entered them in a relational database here. So um, it automatically, as I entered, gave me um, a repair ID number, and then there's a total cost for the repair. It doesn't take into account that maybe three different things are repaired. It was just the total cost for the repair. There was a date of the repair, and then who did the repairing? You know, which which garage? Now, in Microsoft Access, unlike Excel, you can choose what kind of uh, units are going to be in each column. So, repair ID is just a number, and it builds up as I add columns. Repair cost is dollars. Okay. Time of repair is a date, and supplier is just uh, letters, okay? Okay, but so now I've captured the overall how much am I spending, what date, and uh, who am I spending it with. So now I could do, you know, basic lookups of, you know, 
how many repairs did I do in 2005, how many repairs did I do in 2007, uh, how much did I spend, how much did I spend with Ricky, okay, but it wasn't all the information I really needed. So this is the relational baby database to the other database. And this is where I'm going to capture what particular item got fixed. Uh, you'll see that in the item repaired column on the left. What is the labor cost and the parts cost? And then uh, if there's some details to capture, I even have the tax, so that eventually it all adds up to the actual invoice. And... Um, <clears throat> These I call repair events. So the repair ID is the whole repair bill. Repair event is each item that got repaired. And the access gives these numbers too, as you can see on the left. But then I have the ability to enter the repair ID. Repair ID, the left-hand column. And that's how I link the two databases. The Mama database and the baby database, okay? And I can capture a lot more detail in here, the second one. And now I can pull reports. By the way, oh, once I make the two databases and access, I can go to a view where I um, can set up the relationships. And you can see um, repair occasion is the detailed one with parts and labor. And repair item repaired is the... Uh, is the MAMA database, and you see I, I'm able to draw a line and link the two by repair ID. And then I can run um, reports in access, um, or I can look at a total repair cost and see how much the parts were in the repair, what percentage of it is parts, what percentage is it, is it of labor, and I can do a repair query of all kinds, and I can also look up um, different items that got repaired. So I can look up how many times did the tires uh, get fixed. So I can look up by item repaired. I can look up by air conditioning, etc. So this is a relational database. It's a papa database or a mama database and a baby database linked by one common item, one common column. In this case, it's um, repair ID. And it enables me to do analyses and looks things up. If you look at a huge, huge database like Amazon's with tens of millions of customers, um, doing it this way uh, saves time in processing and uh, it's, it saves space and saves storage space too because they don't have a lot of blank uh, fields uh, this way. And if I put it all in one big linear database, I'd have a lot of blank fields. Okay. Here's me doing another lookup by supplier. So how many items did Ricky repair, and how many items did Universal Super repair. Okay, 